Hello and welcome to the Morningstar Investment Conference in London. I'm Emma Wall and I'm joined today by Schroeder's Martin Slangberg to talk about European equities. Hello, Martin. So why do you think people, several years on from the crisis, are still quite nervous about European equities? Um, I think most investors have very, very deep memories. And we tend to think of politics when we think of Europe. We tend to think of the euro and the volatility that we saw in late 2011, the, the sovereign debt crisis. I think it takes time to really unwind that in some ways, actually, business dynamics are more important than, than politics. And also, I think, uh, to be fair, I think there's been a lot of improvement with regards to the ECB, the regulatory environment, and the removal of a lot of uh, systemic risks that, that could have actually impacted a lot of business models very negatively. So do you think that fear is unfounded and investors need to reevaluate how they consider European equities? I, I, I think it's largely unfounded because we do have the stability of that oversight. When we think about how a bank sit right there in the middle of the economies, uh, obviously, you know, any, any failures such as uh, we saw in the great financial crisis of 2008 and, and to a lesser extent in, in Europe in 2011, it takes it takes time before that actually uh, gets removed. And I think uh, in terms of the mechanisms, the bail-in mechanisms that we have today, I think uh, in some regards that uh, it's now disconnected from uh, uh, the plight of the sovereigns in some ways. Europe is a little behind um, where we are, perhaps in the US and, and Brexit aside in the UK in terms of recovery and in, in terms of central bank stimulus. Do you think it is moving in that direction though? We will see an end to, to, to quantitative easing propping up asset classes? Oh, no doubt, no doubt. And that's true for Europe as well. And, and uh, Europe is, is, is behind the US cycle in, in, in so many ways, whether it's technology adoption, whether it's QE, and, and now obviously Q, QT. So QT is, is, is obviously happening right here, right now in Europe. We're still, we're still printing, uh, but it's fading. Um, but you have to look at that interest rate as well. How do you normalize that? Currently, uh, the ECB is running at minus 0 0.4. And if you look at some of the peripheral norms, uh, uh, much more negative. So the yield environment has to normalize. And, and the reason for that is, is because parts of the European economy are starting to show signs of overheating. Uh, business confidence levels are, are, are exceedingly high when you look at Germany, labor uh, wage pressures. Uh, but I think the ECB also has to keep an eye on Southern Europe as well, which, which is clearly recovering in some ways. Um, and so it's, a, it's got a difficult balancing act, uh, uh, which is why we think it's going to take time for rates to normalize towards zero and indeed start yielding uh, um, positive returns. So, so Europe still very much uh, lagging the US cycle, but that's no bad place to be right now. So that's the macroeconomic backdrop, but you're first and foremost a stock picker. Where are you seeing the best opportunities right now for investment? Um, clearly, uh, value has struggled in Europe. Uh, we're very, very style agnostic. And that's, that's from, a, from a factor point of view, I think that's where we're sort of effectively hunting. Uh, and what we also really, really like are corporate change stories, self-help. Um, you know, last couple of years, there used to be cost cutting. Uh, running fast to stand still and protect the margins. Uh, but in today's world, it's, it's radically shifting towards more shareholder returns focused. Uh, in Europe, we have vast amounts of excess cash earning negative yields, recycling that uh, back to shareholders, uh, dividends and share buybacks, similar to what we've seen in the US over the last seven, eight years. It's, it's, it's coming to Europe as well. So corporate change, uh, demerger stories, uh, you know, capital allocation, and improved dividend yield is really the type of specific stories that we're targeting. And by and large, they tend to be value companies, uh, but they also tend to be big industrial conglomerates that are now effectively uh, um, making themselves more well run. Martin, thank you very much. Thank you. This is Emma Wolf for Morningstar. Thank you for watching.